All right, here we are again for part two. I have a couple example problems I want to work through, and then we're going to be done. Yep. Okay, problem 9.31. Determine the moment of inertia and the radius of gyration of the shaded area with respect to the x-axis. All right, so I'm going to use the, a tabular method to work at this problem. Now I'm going to let, um, let's say, I'm going to define a few axes. Um, well, actually, I'm just going to say, let x bar be a shapes, maybe i x bar a shapes i about its own about a piece about that piece of centroid and i know that um, i know that ix bar for a rectangle anyway is bh cubed over 12 so the moment of inertia of a rectangle about its own centroid is bh cubed over 12. Yes. Under your examination, what are you given the table of the centroid? Okay. Um, with respect to the x-axis. So we want to find the moment of inertia about ix, and we're going to need to do that using a table. All right. So let's do that thing I said. Um, now, let's see. All right, um, actually, let me use this one here, just a hypercalc. Okay, so let's do, um, shall we say, mm, okay, let me work through this. The, just double check something. Okay, so I want to set up a table like this. I'm going to find a, let's say I have piece number. Let's say I'm going to do piece number one, two, and three. With the boundaries being here and here. Then, so I'll have um, piece number in the first column. Then, I maybe we'll have B, the base, and the height, where I can input the geometric information. The area, and we'll have pieces one, two, and three. The um, I X bar, which will be for each piece, the moment of inertia about that piece's own centroid. So for this piece here, for example, the I X bar for piece uh, one or piece three here will be about its own centroid. Yes. Okay. Uh, D will be the distance between um, will be the distance between the centroid of each piece and the axis that we want this thing about. We want this thing with respect to the x-axis. Yes? Yes, I divided into three rectangles. I drew the divide right here. Okay. I drew the divisions right there. I think that's going to be the simplest way to do that. Find D, again. Uh, D, again, is the distance from pieces from a pieces centroid to the axis we want okay. 
and then I'll want a d squared. Okay, so piece one has a B of um, 48 millimeters and a height of six. Piece two has a B of, let's see, what is that? That's eight millimeters and a height of 48. And Part piece three here has a base of 24 millimeters and a height of six. And for those who aren't aware, do you know what we call this kind of shape? Huh? This is actually a T section. Well, well, sort of. A, you could call it a T, although it's or it's a. Eh, wait, I don't know if I'd call it a T. Usually, when I think of T, it's just it's without the um, without this. This is more a built-up section. Oh, so never mind. We could call it a T, but it's more like a shortened eye, a clipped eye or something like that. Okay, now we do some multiplication. Uh, let's see, got it. Uh, so let's see, 48 times 6 is 288. Uh, 8 times 48 is 384 and 24 times 6 24 times 6 is 144 144 then for each of these I'm going to use the formula bh cubed over 12 so bh cubed so um, uh, 48 times Six, uh, let's see, six to the third um, times 48 over 12 is 864. So that is the um, moment of inertia of piece one about its own centroidal axis. This is the moment of inertia of piece one about its own centroidal axis. The formula? Yeah, the we actually derived this one in class, but you could actually for find this formula from uh, a table of formulas as well. Um, here then, bh cubed over 12, let's see, so 48 uh, to the third uh, times 8 divided by 12 is going to be 73,000. 73,728. And all of this is going to be in millimeters to the fourth power. Uh, then, well, all these and these anyway. Let's see. Uh, 24 times 6 to the third over 12. 6 to the third times 24 divided by 12 equals 432. Now, we need to find our d's. Uh, for, the fir for part two, it's fairly easy. For piece two, it's fairly easy. The d is zero. The centroid of this middle piece is exactly on the x-axis. The centroid of the middle piece is exactly on the x-axis. Then um, d, sorry, for part one, the distance is going to be 24 plus 3, so 27. Where did I get that? Again, distance from the piece's centroid to the axis we want. So we have this D here. This is D1. And notice I am deliberately drawing this on a line that's in the middle. I'm not drawing it. I'm not drawing this line here or here. I'm deliberately drawing it in the middle because I want to make clear that this is the distance from the centroid of this piece to the axis we want. So it's not the distance directly to that piece, it's the distance to that piece's centroid. So this piece is six millimeters thick, 
So the distance from the x-axis to the centroid is 24 millimeters plus 3 millimeters, or 27. And the same thing here will be true, 27. 24 plus 6 over 2, or 27. And then we can find the AD squared um, here. This is just going to be 0. Uh, D is going to be 27 squared times 288 equals 209,952. And this one, um, let's see, is 27 squared times uh, 144, 104,976. Okay, now consider this for a moment. Let's look at this. All of these are going to, th th this column and this column are going to go into, are going to simply be added together to get our final moment of inertia. But remember from last time that we said that moment of inertia, base, that, that relates directly to the bending capacity of the, of the section, right? Or the bending capacity of a shape. Well, look at this. This shape has a bending capacity of 210,000, approximately 210,000 uh, uh, millimeters to the fourth. Piece two only has 74,000, approximately. Even though if you look at it, this has an area of 384, and this only has an area of 288. So this piece has a greater area. There's more material here. There's more steel here. There's more aluminum, whatever this is made of. There is more material here, but this one is actually contributing more to the bending capacity of the section. And the reason for that is because, yes, the area of this piece is of this piece here is smaller than this piece, but it's much further from the centroid of the shape. That d squared is a very powerful thing. So that is, hopefully now you're sort of appreciating why beams are shaped the way they are. This is why we have beams shaped like this. Notice, this shape is deliberately designed to place a large area far from the centroid of the overall shape. By doing that, you get this d squared term. You greatly in increase the, um, the moment of inertia of the section. And so you get more bang for your buck, basically. So if you just, um, uh, I'll, show you that. I'll show you this after this, just a second. Let me find the, fi the final answer here. So I'm going to sum this up. 864 plus 73,728 plus 432 equals 75,024. And then we can sum this column up. 209,952 plus 104,976 equals, uh, I get 314,928. And the final uh, IX is just going to be this, this column plus this column, 75,024 plus 314,928. Um, 75,024, which equals 389,952 millimeters to the fourth. And that is Ix. Now, let's say I were to do the same thing, but uh, let's compare this to something else. What if I had a... Um, oh, let's see. What if I had a, a shape? Let me compare something a little different. Okay, so the total, let me get the total area of this just for comparison purposes. The total area, the sum of this, 288 plus 384 plus 144 is 816. So 816 
Let's divide that by 48. That would be 17. Okay. So a shape, let's compare this to another shape with the same area. What if I were to use just a rectangle? What if I had a shape that was, um, let's see, that would be, according to my math, that would be 17 inches wide, and here's our x-axis again, and this is uh, 24 millimeters, oops, sorry, this should be millimeters, not inches, millimeters, and then the same 24 millimeters here, the same height. Well, the, um, we would only have the I, um, the IX bar here. And this one would be I, again, this is what I'm doing here is not part of the um, question, it's not part of the problem, I'm just illustrating. IX bar on this one would be uh, 17 times 48 to the third over 12, which would be, let's see, uh, 48 to the third times 17 over 12, which would be 156,672 millimeters to the fourth. So, compare the two. Let me do a percent. Um, so, maybe I'll do the negative 1 times 389,952. Actually, let me just do 156 over 389. Okay. Approximately, this is 40% of this. About. So, notice this shape here has the exact same area as this uh, shape over here. This shape here has the exact same area as this entire shape here. I purposely calculated something with the same area. But notice, this has only 40% the moment of inertia of this one. So by positioning it into a series of plates like this, instead of just one rectangle like this, you can get much greater bang for your buck. You can get a much greater bending capacity with the same amount of material. Hmm. Now, there are limits to this. You don't just want to, you can't just make really deep beams. Like, we can't just have, like, a 60-inch deep beam in most cases because then you're, um, you can't use your building. There's no point in making, uh, I mean, we could make a really efficient building if we had, you know, uh, floor beams that were 8 feet tall, but... Uh, that's going to be problematic for actually um, living or working in that building. Uh, okay, questions on this? Do we, like in general society, do we just discover this, that this shape was there before the map was discovered? That's a good question. The question was historically, did we discover that this shape was beneficial before the math? Or did we figure this out after? I'm not quite sure. I, I would imagine probably somebody probably figured that out in antiquity, probably. But who knows? Um, I'm not quite sure. I mean, it, it it doesn't take a you know you can you can pr demonstrate this with even without any math. If you say, you know, if you have some logs and you just um, nail a couple boards together into an I beam shape, you can find that it has much greater capacity to resist load than simply three of them, say, nailed together like this. Um, but that's something someone could discover without the necessary math. But uh, as far as whether um, whether I-beam shapes are used in antiquity, I'm not quite sure, although it wouldn't surprise me if they were. I don't know enough about, say, medieval construction techniques or whatever to say for sure. Uh, other questions? To answer his question, I, I read once that in physics you always have the problem first, that would imply that in ancient history you would have the problem and then you would use a math to describe it. Yeah, it's certainly possible. Okay. 
All right, another example. Hmm. Another homework problem, yes. 9.42. Determine the moments of inertia, Ix bar, um, and um, Iy bar of the area shown with respect to the centroidal axes um, here. Okay, so what essentially we're looking for here is we want to find the moment of inertia about this combined shape's centroid. We're going to try to find the moment of inertia of this shape about the combined shape's centroid. So this is the x we're looking for. This will be the ix we're looking for in this case. But we also have some other things to consider. So actually, let me just call this, I'm going to say the x-axis, I'm just going to call this x here. And then we would have a few sub-x's, piece x's. So let me call this maybe here, maybe this is going to be, Maybe this is x1, and this is piece 1, and this is piece 2. And this here x would be x2. The moment of inertia, so the, the, that will be the axis that we'll use to find the moment of inertia of piece 2 about its own um, axis, about its own centroid. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is to find the centroid of the entire piece. Find centroid of entire shape. Okay, so the centroid uh, obviously of the entire shape will be 18 inches here. It is symmetrical in the vertical axis, about a vertical axis, so that's obviously 18 inches along here. But if I want the centroid of the entire shape, I can then say, okay, let's see. Um, let me show a tabular method for the centroid. So I will actually, maybe I can do a combined big table. So I'll have one, two, And first thing I'm going to worry about is the i x bar. In fact, you know what, to be consistent with this here, maybe I'll just call this x bar, the centroid of the entire thing. Okay, so um, let's see. What else do I need? Um, yes. We'll get there. We, we, you, you're right, we can't. That's what we're going we're gonna, we're gonna to have to find that first. Okay, so let's first get the area of each piece. Well, piece one, the area is just going to be one half of 42 times 36. One half base times height. So, it's just the formula for the area of a triangle. 0. 0.5 times 36 times 42. I get an area of 756 millimeters squared. The area of piece two then is 28 times 36 is 1,008 inches squared or millimeters squared. Then let's say the, um, oh, let's find the H where h would be the, from the base, the height from the base, or just the y-coordinate of the axis, essentially. So maybe this here is h2, 
this is H1. So H1 would be, let's see, well, that is going to be 42 over 3 plus 28. Because the centroid of, it's going to be the centroid of, um, it's the centroid here plus the, the y distance up to the triangle. The centroid of this triangle is one third up the triangle, and then plus this height here. So 28 plus 42 over 3. So 42 divided by 3 plus 28. And I get uh, 42 the H coordinate, the Y coordinate of piece one. And then the um, for piece two, it will simply be 14. Then maybe AH. Uh, let's see. AH, 42 times, um, let's see, 756. is 31,752. And this AH, 1,008 times 14, is 14,112. Then I can sum them up. Uh, plus 31,752. This here is 45,864. Oh, 45,000. 45,864. And this one is 1,000, oh, let's see, uh, 764. So then the overall H bar the, cent the height of the entire centroid, or the height of the centroid of the entire shape, is going to be 45,864 over 1,764. Uh, 45,864 divided by 1,764, which is going to be equal to 26 inches. Or 26 millimeters. So the, that is the Y bar or the H or whatever you want to call it. It is the um, height to the centroid of the entire shape. So this is uh, maybe H bar, for instance. Using this, we can now get the D of each piece. The D of each piece is going to be the distance from the absolute value of the distance between the centroid of that piece and the entire shape. So again, in this case, the D, again, D is always the distance from the axis of what we're, of the, of the piece to the axis that we're looking at. And since this time we're looking at the axis that passes through the centroid, the D is just simply going to be the difference in the H's. So D for piece one is 42 minus 26, which that's going to be 16, right? Uh, yes, 16. Don't worry about whether it's positive or negative. We're going to square it anyway. Right. And this one is 12. Yes. I didn't see what you said. 42 minus 26 or 26? H, okay, 26 is this H bar. It's the height of the, again, so D, T, uh, D1 would be from here to here. D2 would be from here to here. And that those will just be the difference in the H's. Okay, then uh, let's say um, for each one, I'm going to use the formula Ix bar, where Ix bar is about the um, centroid of the entire shape, Ix plus AD squared. This is where it's important, again, this is why I reminded you or I told you not to be too lost with the variables, because again, uh, this, may, this may be a little bit different than what you used earlier, and that's okay. I'm not, I don't really care what I'm calling these. I'm just being very cognizant of what I'm doing as I go along. So I know that I have my X bar defined here, or X bar defined here. So IX will be the, the IX of each individual piece. IX, okay. A triangle, IX 
a formula, for, there's a table of moments of inertia on page 43 in the Bear, uh, in, table, oh, sorry, on page 483 of the Beer Vector Mechanics book. And I see an IX of 136, 1 over 36 BH cubed. That is the formula for the moment of inertia about the centroid of a triangle. The moment of inertia of a triangle about its own centroid. The moment of inertia of a triangle about its own centroid. Yes? Uh huh. It's a separate table than what we're used to looking at. What do you mean? Okay, sorry. Um. Okay. Yes. Yes. For the third time, this will be on the exam. Okay. Yes, that as well. <laughs> okay. So um. Let's see. The formula for this, for the triangle, for piece one, the triangle, will be um, 136 bh cubed. B is uh, 36. Actually, let me get the h first in here. 42 to the third power times the base, which is 36. And then divided by 36. Well, that was pointless. Um, So I get uh, 74,088, and for piece 2, it's simply going to be BH cubed over 12, rectangle, IX is BH cubed over 12, yes. Yes, there are different formulas for IY. Yes, you have to use the appropriate formulas. Yes. Okay. Um, IX is going to be BH cubed over 12. So uh, 42 to the third times 36 uh, divided by 12. And I get uh, 222,000. 222,264. 264. Actually, let me move this line. 222,264. Then, AD squared for each piece. A times D squared. Um, so, let's see. 16 squared times 756 is 193,536. And this one is 1,008 times 12 squared. So 144 times 1,008. And this is 145,152, like so. I can sum these columns up, so then I go back and add um, 193,536. I get, um, for this one, uh, 338,688. Yes? Let me double check. Let's see. Okay. Um, let me check that there's a question on this number here. Um, so piece two, um, BH cubed over 12. So 28 third to the third power times 36 divided by three or divided by uh, 12. Um, dang it. Just a second. Uh, BH cubed. So 28 to the third power uh, times 36 divided by 12. Oh, thank you. Something went wrong. It's uh, 65,856. That was a miscalculation. So the actual one is 65,000. 
856 plus 74,088 and I get 139,944. And then finally, the overall IX bar is going to be 139,944 plus 338,688, which simply comes to 338,688. I get that the overall moment of inertia of this shape about the combined centroid is 478,632 millimeters to the fourth. Questions on that? And I could find the IY, oh, that's going to be a simple, a very similar calculation. It's going to be, the only difference is that there'll be slightly different formulas for the, um, uh, for the moment of inertia, uh, the IX. The, if I do, if I were to do the IY term, the D would actually be zero. The D would actually be zero because the overall Y moment of inertia, the IY, it's right, every, every piece is just right down the center, right down the center. The centroid is right at the middle. The D term is going to be zero for each piece for the Y. Other questions on this? Yes. Oh, standardized measurements for beams. Uh, yes, you can. Um, Standardized measurements of beams, yes, there are sometimes beam tables you can look at that have these pre-calculated, and it's fairly straightforward just to walk through them. You can find your IXs, IYs, that's pretty much it. All right, uh, other questions, yes? Huh? That's what we just found. IX bar. Just, yeah, we just found the combined IX bar for the entire shape. All right, other questions? Okay, all right, this will be on the website. The slides will be up as well. Um, let's see, for the Houston class, we, you'll have your final tomorrow, and the uh, UT Tyler one will have it later in the week. All right, um, let's just, I'll just say that it has been a pleasure being your instructor for this uh, class. Uh, I look forward to maybe seeing some of y'all in later classes, and I wish you all luck on the final exam, and as always, thank you.